what is equality to you and what is science to you? How do you bridge these two things together? Wow, what is equality? <laughs> We're all different and equality is about um, balancing all the structures of power that are put there with science. So when we usually talk about equality, how is called how how we do call about it? Quality, diversity, and inclusion. This is how we usually talk about it. And then we talk about race, gender, uh, economic class, uh, disability. We have these categories. I think the way we make these categories is 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 a very interesting representation of how power is distributed in society. So when we are talking about science and equality, we're talking about science and power, <laughs> and how because science creates power um, and a very transformative power we live since the 19th century in the world created and dominated by technology. It is intertwined with all the class, gender <laughs> and the rest of the categories that the power in society makes. They're intertwined and there's no by chance that only 7% of women are physicists. Remember that the biggest power that still shapes the world right now is the atomic bomb and the semiconductors. And this is the field with less women. And it's not by chance because it's the one that generates more geopolitical power and the, therefore is more intertwined with the identity of men. Um, so when we talk about equality and science, one has never forget that science generates a lot of power in society and everything we do <laughs> will be will be colored by that. There's no way of escaping. And that's also the reason why some groups are marginalized or in countries where science is not so important, you suddenly see more women. Um, it's always the relation of power with the power that is generated by uh, science and technology and who wants to control it. Uh, thank you, uh, Mohan. With that, I think that's that leads to my next question of uh, you have dealt with the biggest corporates um, and you have dealt with translation of in, um, science and technology into business, and uh, a large part of the world is is under Commonwealth. Uh, so, what is your view in terms of uh, equality and uh, business, uh, and if possible, also to some extent technology related business? If you can comment on that. Uh, thank you. Uh, I mean, we we have seen a, a lot of change in last about 30, 40 years. I think it's uh, now, uh, if we, particularly in few countries, like if you look at India, China, or uh, uh, other developing countries, of course, uh, Western countries also, even UK now, uh, the number of girls taking mathematics and all that are more than boys in some of the universities. So I think there is a marked shift uh, uh, which has happened in the last about 20, 30 years. But that doesn't mean the shift of power has happened, as Sonia has said. There's a, because it will take time for people to reach those levels where they can influence the power. So uh, I must say we are in the right direction in terms of um, getting the mix of students in the universities or in, in technical colleges in terms of uh, uh, mix of, of uh, men and women. Uh, and uh, But it will take time. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, definitely there's a need for positive um, uh, action in involving more women, uh, in particularly in technology uh, 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 industry, and particularly making women graduates, whatever, uh, more entrepreneurs in the technology area. So we think, as Sonia said, we feel that if if women come more in technology area or uh, innovations, they will pepper, probably use a technology for better purposes. They will uh, have a much better cost benefit uh, or, or impact uh, or choice uh, than men uh, uh, were there. So I feel um, getting more women into technology entrepreneurship should be one of our main areas of focus. So the, I can answer to that, that um, 
if you want more women entrepreneurs, then money has to become available for women. And it is known that we are very few women entrepreneurs. There are many barriers to us, starting from the fact that it's not seen feminine to be independent and to start your own company. And that's not just a, a matter of, um, it, it basically means that it's very difficult to find a partner, to make a family. We still have to make a choice. And it's not just a choice of nursery. It's a choice that um, uh, it's very hard for women to find partners that are supportive or to find families that are supportive of the activity. And those that do, which are a minority, uh, usually find it very hard to get money. Um, so venture capital, for example, uh, is, 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 is calculated that less than 10, 1% of all the money given to make companies in the world is actually given to women entrepreneurs. So there's a big problem and there are many reasons for that. Uh, the, the fact that uh, those VCs are usually men sitting on boards that are not used to see women having leadership worlds in their environment. Um, and, and they find it very hard to, to match an engineer with a woman face, especially if it doesn't come from middle class or for the type of women they are used to see. We have the opposite case, for example, with Theranos, who was a, a very young upper middle class uh, girl from Harvard who didn't know very much about the science she was saying and yes and yet she was able to raise millions in the Silicon Valley and you can see it's not just gender there there's this intersection between um, I asked many men in the Silicon Valley why you think they were funding um, her homes and not other women which are more experienced. Most uh, big companies, for example, in biotech are uh, modern and biotech, for example, they are the, the, the big successful companies of the pandemic they are run. And also Vaxitech, the company of the Oxford vaccine, are run very much programs by women and science, science made by women, but they're not young and 20 years old. They're 50, 55 year old, very experienced with a long experience. But yet the money, the funders went to a very young, very blonde, very American um, woman. So there are many uh, stereotypes that have to be broken. It's not just a stereotype of gender. Um, and um, so it's a very complex issue, like everything we do in society. So I asked many men in the Silicon Valley, why you think they gave her the money? And I say, because she looked like, many said, because she looked like the daughter we would like to have. Uh, so it's a, it's a very, very <laughs> complex issue, but certainly I think what we can do is to talk about it and, and to highlight it and, and to do a common reflection and also to highlight the, the cases where women entrepreneurs are very successful. I would, for example, put bio and tech. Uh, this couple, the husband, the wife, working together all their life, both very good at business, both very good at science, experience, and they managed to make one of the most successful companies in the world right now. Um, so it's highlight is that they're both the children of immigrants in Germany, which is not an easy place to integrate as a Turkish immigrant. So uh, I think highlighting these cases and studying these cases is very important um, to have objective measures. And the people of the VCs should learn them, that these are the women that are going to make you money not the ones that you think they are. <laughs> so breaking the stereotypes by giving good examples, I think is very important.